Hey guys, it's Danita, your crafty paint lady with Farm and Home Hardware, and today we're going to do a quick tutorial about making um, a serving tray. Um, these are a nice rustic farmhouse look. Um, we can actually engrave it with your initial and your name on it, or you can do it as a, um, a plain one or whatever you'd like, but uh, we will have kits for these available at our um, stores. Um, call the store for details and we'll get that hooked up for you but real cute real easy and I'm gonna start to do one um, if you just wanted it plain it they do look really pretty with the wood natural wood uh, get one that has some really nice uh, knots in it or green in it but uh, for our example we're going to use one that was engraved with our engraving machine uh, at Farm and Home. Um, the kit that is available at the store has everything you need to do um, it with except for like a hammer and I would uh, use a nail that's for distressing but it does come with instructions step by step hopefully uh, I made them as easy to understand as possible. Your handles which are just um, sashes like window sashes so really cute so they come with two of those come with your uh, uh, 1 by 12 cut um, and like I said it, you can either have it engraved for an extra charge or get one that is um, plain I'll also give you the candle parts there for the sides the out of the 1 by 3s we're going to use um, something called aged wood from Verithane. Great product. Uh, it's not a stain, so it's more of a water base. Although it is water base, it is tough to get off your hands and your clothes, so I do suggest making sure you uh, wear your paint or clothes. And I did include gloves in the kit, but uh, the Verithane aged wood accelerator, fantastic. It comes, we're using uh, the brown, the aged wood. Um, but it also comes in a weathered gray and a charred wood, which is an awesome black looking um, wood. But a lot easier to work with than stain, uh, less smelly, um, less chemicals, that kind of stuff. So really fun to work with. Um, and you'll get a foam brush in your kit. And you'll also get... I threw in a couple um, screws in case you're having trouble getting these guys to stay on, but I, uh, I put mine on with just wood glue, so you'll get a little packet of wood glue. Um, so hopefully that would be enough, but you can drill up from the bottom, but if you do that to put the, these handles on, um, but if you do that, you'll have to make sure you counter sitting up pretty good so you don't want it scratching up any table or anything. Um, you could also put felt over top of the, the heads of these. But that's a last resort. Don't use them if you don't need them. But those are great for distressing. So that's a, um, one of those little added bonus in there. Got a pair of gloves that I highly recommend you use. And a rag because we'll be washing it, uh, wiping it in, kind of wiping it off, and drying it a little faster. So that's everything you'll get in your kit. First thing we're going to do is distress it, which is, this is uh, the wonderful therapy. A couple tips with that. Um, you want to go as random as possible, because if you do a nice pattern all the way around every single thing, it'll look very um, like you bought it in a store. You, you want random, you want age, you want to look like it was around the family for 100 years, it's fallen on the floor. Um, you know that kind of stuff so you want it very very random so I um, I did put a few hammer marks in my wood here too but don't you don't want to do too much of that this is just from the head of the hammer you don't want to do a whole lot of that because it will actually pool in there and if you do like cover the whole thing it will kind of take away from your engraving. Now, if you're doing a plain one, have at it. Have a lot of fun with it. But again, very random. You don't want it to look like um, you did it. You want it to look like aged just got to it. Um, another thing we're going to be doing with the nails, as you can see right here, uh, or the screws that are included, um, I, w I wanted uh, like 
wormholes or insect holes that look like it was in the wood when the wood was cut. Um, so we're going to kind of do that again, random, but if you kind of bunch up a few places together, it looks like more like a colony or whatever. So it looks really nice and it does pull in the extra, um, varathane, the, uh, accelerator. So it actually will darken up spots that are, are kind of deep. So, um, keep that in mind while you're doing it. So we're going to just have at it harder in some places. You're not going to see a lot of your sides here, but I like to do them. But just very random like that. And as you can see, this one um, actually had like a um, crease in it uh, where it had been something had jabbed it and it had but I'm I'm embracing that and I think it'll look really cool with it but again you don't want it to be the same everywhere you want it to be very random I'm not going to do too much there I'm going to do my edges a lot more than the body of it because like I said you don't want too much on here to uh, take away from from your engraving if you are doing that So I'm pretty happy with that. And because I'm kind of weird this way, I like to do the back. Especially if you're going to keep it yourself, you might not care. You might hand this down or give it as a present. Um, you want it to look like you cared about it and did all. And um, kind of a fun thing with the back. I like to do the back because um, I like to practice on that. So sometimes I'll, you know, see how long I want to keep the stuff on. Um, and if you do the back first, you haven't heard anything. That gets, helps you get the technique now. All right. And we're not going to forget our little sides here. These have to be done too. Same thing. Really focus on the edges. Harder in some spots than others. All the corners really shouldn't have uh, tight corners. Um, that is one thing that happens with age for sure. The age of a product. So we'll get those sides and edges done. And again, I'm not sure what I want to do. If you got a nice piece, you probably don't have to worry about doing both sides of it because you will be gluing those down on the sides. But... Um, if you're not sure what you're going to use, then go ahead and do that. And the sides are going to show, so I'm going to bang those up pretty good too. And I'm going to leave the one side pretty flat because that's going to handle my glue. But again, I'm going to get all of those corners beat up pretty good. So it doesn't take much to really give it a whole lot of character, but it really does give it, uh, it a ton of, of character. Now, I really like that um, knot, so I'm going to use this as my top part that's going to show. Um, so I'm not going to beat up that one side too much. So, And again, we don't want it perfect, and you don't want, you know, every inch hammer mark want to be random and I like to you know a little harder in some areas and softer in some miss them all together but I really do like to beat up those edges there I'm gonna just mark on the sides sorry about the noise but like I said, what a great therapy. Work off some frustrations. All right, that looks great. Um, so we're going to set those aside. Now um, I'm going to show you how I like to do my wormholes. And I think I hammered all my, my pieces apart today. So um, I do have, uh, you don't have the, a screw with it, a nail will work, anything like that. So, uh, again, very random. But what I'm 
going to do is create a little colony there. Move on, create a little colony here. Some deeper, some not so much. Very random. Now, of course, no one's going to see the bottom, but it's a good place to get your technique down. And then you can see kind of what you want. And you can put ones and twos, but I like to kind of bunch them up a little bit more. Just to get that look. And I don't like to do them too deep either, um, but you definitely want to be able to see them. So I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it just just some random uh, colonies of what uh, maybe bugs getting into them. Now remember, your sides are going to be covered, so you don't have to deal too much with that. Let's see, just a little bit of and very random spots. it kind of later here so it's not going to take away from my wording all right and you know don't need to do too much but this is all a preference of look how you want it to look and I'm going to do a little here so it just looks like it got kind of covered by this and then we're also going to do our sides so to 10 little areas. And you, don't, you can't mess this up. This is just a random thing uh, and it's all about how it looks good to you. So just have fun in this free. All right, so I'm liking that way. I'm liking the way that's gonna look. All right, so we are gonna get our gloves on. Okay. And we will start with our Varathane. And again, uh, in the kit, I do have the aged Varathane for you. But if you wanted to do this kind of on your own, obviously you could stain it. You could put tongue oil on it. Um, you could put butcher block oil. Um, you can make it food safe. This is not considered food safe. Um, but after it cures, if you want to put a butcher block oil on it, um, that would uh, uh, make it more food safe. To me, it was more decoration or just a set. You can, you know, put glasses on it, that kind of thing. But if you did want to make it food safe, there are ways to do that. Um, everything is is kind of food safe after all of the curing takes place. But just make sure you read whatever product you're going to use. This one, not considered food safe unless uh, you let it cure good and then put butcher block oil on it, which uh, we do sell in the paint department. So, all right, so I shook it up good. A real dark Danish oil would be adorable with this too. So there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do with that. But we have our Varathane. Now, because I want this, this is where I'm gonna put my wood glue. I want this to dry first. So normally I would do the back, but since we're in a hurry, with the video. I'm going to do the front first, but uh, I'm also going to kind of give you a couple little tips here. Um, when you're doing anything that's engraved, really want you to go around and get that, work it into the engraved areas first, because we want that to pull in there a little bit, soak in. The longer you leave this on, the darker it'll be, but then you don't want it to be, you know, too, too much either. But I'm going to put a really good amount in my engraving. I've had people in my class ask if you need to do the back. You don't have to do the back, but I think that that would be a good idea, especially if you were going to ever give it as a gift, but that is up to you. So we're going to work that in there real good, work it into the engraved parts. And then I'm going to do the entire thing before I wipe it in. So we're going to let it set. Now, like I said, you can it, you can also do more coats. You should have enough for two coats in the um, kit. If not, just let us know if you run out. But um, I put a little extra in there. So I worked it into the engraving real well. And now we're just going to 
go across the whole thing, working in real nicely. The foam brush is great for this because it really helps push that stuff into the wood grain. There's no need to sand um, these pieces first or anything. Um, you can, of course, but we're going for a more rustic look. So we just go beat it up a little bit and then go to town with this. So you see how it's really picking up in, in those uh, uh, hammer marks. And you can see the uh, little bug holes that we made um, with the... Uh, the hammer and the screw. Those look really nice in there. So we're just going to work that in. Now you might have spots that don't want to take it. Again, I think you should embrace it. I think it looks good, but you can see there's like a little few spots that aren't going to be as dark as the other. I think that looks great. Uh, you want it to look like it's been around for a long, long time. So I do my sides before I wipe this off. So I've worked it in really good with my foam brush, but we're gonna do our sides. And you don't want it to run, it is really thin stuff. This is real thin to work with, very watery. Um, so you wanna watch your drips. So if I'm coming down across this and it gets too dark, it's gonna look like a, a big line on that. So I don't want that. Um, I'm gonna wipe, get some of off my brush here and then I'll kinda pull that back up. But you definitely wanna watch your drips because they'll be darker and we don't want that. Make sure you, uh, as you can see the mess I'm making already, make sure that you uh, work your, or work with a drop cloth underneath. I prefer the drop cloths that are, have the paper and then the plastic. So we wanna make this even, so I'm just kinda coming back down to give everything a little bit of a two coat, okay? And every time I do a corner that I might have might drip on there, I want to do that. So, all right. So the edges that have been cut are going to be real thirsty. So make sure you get those guys in there and work it in. And then you come back around and look at it before you wipe everything off to make sure that you don't have any spots that soaked in too much. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful on this side so I don't have to too much so don't get too much on your brush at first when you're doing like those edges because they have to be a little more precise so you can see there's going to be like little parts uh, if you're not careful that will um, on the sides will show where it's been a longer and that will get darker so be careful with that be very precise if you get any up here you want to make sure you feather it in Good, so we can wipe some of this off. And you want to work it in because you don't want any spots that are look darker than the others. So just kind of wipe that in until it dries almost. That'll help it dry to where we uh, so we can go to get to the next step too. So all right, that looks good. Okay, so it's getting really dark, and you see how my. Um, the M is going away, I am going to start scrubbing that off. So we're wiping it out. Oh, well, that looks really good. And it's really pulling in to my hammer marks. If you want it lighter, um, you can wipe it off before you start to do the sides or start with the sides. Um, and if you want it darker, you can leave it on a little bit longer. Totally up to you, but it really does some good, cool stuff with the uh, wood grain. So, all right, that looks good. And that will help, wiping it down will help it to dry so we're ready to go to uh, when we glue on our sides there. All right, it looks good. I love this, got like a mark in the wood that's really picking up differently. It looks good. Okay, that looks great. Super fun. And it will dry up too as it soaks through. Okay, and I'm going to be real careful we don't 
get any on the other side. All right, and this, we're just going to wipe, brush it through. So if you're doing a, um, a plain one without engraving, this would be what you're looking at. And like I said, if I have no engraving, I'd probably distress a little bit deeper. Okay, that looks great. If you have any places that are, you know, beat up a little, you want to give them a little extra. But that foam brush really holds a lot in. Look how fun that is. Easy peasy, one step. All right, and we're going to wipe this down. And you see how this is a little bit lighter. They didn't let it sit in too long. But it still really shows those great wood green and, and the uh, distress marks that we made. Looks fabulous. See how the wormholes? They look great. Okay. So we're going to put this guy aside for a moment. And if you got spots that you don't like um, on there, you can sand a little and just because they just might be um, mill marks. All right, looks good. So we're just going to do these real quick. Same thing, um, marks you want to. Um, where you hammered it in, you want those in a little bit, the edges, you want to make sure you get those good. Watch for drips, because they will show, because it's, uh, it'll stay on the, the wood longer. Make sure you work it in good, get those parts that were cut because they're the thirstiest. I'm just going to wipe this guy down real quick. Look how those great sides are where I beat it up with the hammer. Just pick up. Look at all the character that that brings out. It's really good. So we don't want it perfect. We want it to look like it's been in the family for a long time. We'll get this other one done. Now, of course, you don't have to distress if you don't like that look. By all means, this is your piece. So um, this also would look really good chalk painted with, you know, some fun colors. Um, so if you have a more modern house, um, you could actually do this with the stain or the... Uh, accelerator, the aged wood accelerator, and then uh, chalk paint over that too. Um, but if you do that, you would want to make sure that you either wax it or put on a um, clear coat sealer of some sort. So, but you can always stop by the paint department and ask if you have any questions about that. All right, so we have to wipe this guy down. Oh, that's really nice. So there is, uh, I don't want to say no smell, but no bad smell to this stuff. So it's much easier to work with in the house than this uh, oil-based stain. Um, and real easy to work with. Like I said, 